Hey, Chem Kids, Campbell here. In our first video on the mole, we're gonna talk about what does it mean to have a mole of something? Well, a mole is really just a unit um, conversion factor. Um, something that we use to make it easier to work with things that are teeny tiny, like atoms or molecules. It allows us to convert even between units. So from weighing something in the lab to how many molecules that is. So there are three units that we can convert between if we have the mole. One is, of course, how many molecules we have. We're going to find out how a mole relates to molecules first. Then we're going to talk about how a mole relates to mass, grams, what we would weigh in the lab. And we're going to talk about how it relates to volume at STP. But that'll be our next video. So how does moles relate to molecules? Well, a mole is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules, atoms, particles, whatever you want to call them. But that's called Avogadro's number. It's not, it's a very, very large number, right? Because molecules are teeny tiny. But it's really kind of like when we talk about a dozen, right? If I'm asking you to buy a dozen eggs, you'd buy 12 eggs. So a dozen is 12 of something. A mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd of that things. So like 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd marshmallows. Or more appropriately, one mole of oxygen atoms would be 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd oxygen atoms. Or a mole of water molecules would be 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd water molecules. So just like a dozen is 12 of something, a mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd of that thing. So on the front of your packet, there's that um, picture, and I want you to fill in in that box 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Anytime you are given some number of atoms or molecules and you're asked to calculate the number of moles, what you're gonna do is you're going to divide by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd because that 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd is the number of molecules in a mole. So we need to cancel out molecules, so that's why we divide. If instead you're given some number of moles and you're asked to calculate the atoms or molecules, then you multiply by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. One thing I like to say is anytime you have moles, you multiply. So if I am given moles and I want to find atoms, molecules, particles, then I multiply by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. If, however, I go the other way, if I have particles and I want moles, then I'm going to divide. But I just use 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. It doesn't even matter what the molecule, the atom, what it is. It's just 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. So let's try this. I have 5.3 times 10 to the 26 atoms of copper. I want to find moles. If you're not good with word problems and math, what I highly recommend you find the number and the unit attached to it. So there's my 5.3 times 10 to the 26 atoms. And then look for the question. I wanna know how many moles. So what do we do? We have atoms, we want moles. So we're gonna divide by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. So pull out your calculators, and I want you to make sure you can do this math, because if you don't put in your calculator right, you're not going to get the answer, which is 880 moles of copper. Make sure you can do this, and if you're not, if you're not getting 880, come to class and let me know, and I'll show you what you're doing wrong. All right, what about this one? In this case, I am given 3.5 moles, and I'm asked to find molecules. Well, now I have moles, some number of moles, so I'm going to multiply by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Now, this time I set it up actually as kind of a fraction, so you can see since it's 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules per mole, if I set it up like this and we use what's called dimensional analysis, you can see that I cancel out my mole unit and I'm left in molecules. But if I have some number of moles and I want molecules, I multiply by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. All right, I want you to try these. Pause the video and find out how many molecules are in 15 moles of sodium chloride and how many moles there are in 3.6 times 10 to the 25 molecules of water. If you did this right, you 
you should have 9.03 times 10 to the 24th moles of sodium chloride, 9.8 moles of water. Now, what does that mean really, all those molecules? Well, if I go in the lab, how do I weigh a molecule? I mean, do they all weigh the same? Well, no, they don't. It's just like if I had a dozen pennies, that would weigh different than a dozen Skittles. Although I think I'd like the Skittles better. Atoms are really small. And so if I try to go into the lab and I weigh a carbon atom, I'm not gonna be able to do it because a carbon atom actually weighs 1.99 times 10 to the negative 23rd grams. And I don't have a balance that, that is that sensitive. So we work with moles so that we can deal with a reasonable number for mass and that's called the atomic mass. So what the atomic mass is, is the mass in grams of one mole of a substance. And wait, atomic mass, wasn't that from chapter four? And don't we find that on the periodic table? Well, absolutely. If we go to our periodic table, remember the number on the bottom here, this number down here, that's my atomic mass. We actually call it the AMU, atomic mass unit. So when you see the abbreviation AMU, we're talking about the atomic mass. So for example, if I wanna know how much one mole of hydrogen weighs, well, I go here and I find out that it weighs 1.01 grams, which I of course will probably round to one. And if I wanna know how much one mole of aluminum weighs, well, I go to the periodic table and I see it's 26.98. So the atomic mass is the mass of one mole of an element in grams. So what about when we deal with molecules? How much does a molecule weigh? Well, then we deal with what's called molar mass. Molar mass is the mass in grams of a mole of a molecule. What? Okay. So you know those chemical formulas we've been writing from nomenclature? Well, they tell us how many atoms of each element there are in that compound. So like if I have a molecule of water, which is H2O, that means I have two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. So if I wanna calculate the molar mass of water, I'm just gonna to add together the atomic masses of each of the elements and make sure I take into account how many there are. So what we do is we go to the periodic table, look up that atomic mass, and we multiply by how many atoms there are in the formula. So for example, hydrogen. Hydrogen is 1.01 .01 grams per mole. I just rounded it to one. There are two of them in water, because it's H2O, so I multiply by two and that's two grams, or 2.02 .02 if you wanna be real specific. Oxygen, the molar mass is 16 grams. Of course, I rounded it, it as like 15.999 or something. There's only one, so its contribution to the molar mass is 16 grams, which means that the molar mass of water is 18 grams. So there are 18 grams in one mole of water. So interesting, one mole of water in the lab weighs 18 grams, and that means I have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of water. <gasps> Ooh, moles are useful. So let's go back to that front table um, in your packet and you'll see the mass part. So what I want you to do is fill in that box with molar mass and the fact that molar mass is from the periodic table. And anytime you are given a number of grams, so you have some number of grams and you're asked to find moles, when you're finding moles, you always divide. And this time we're gonna divide by molar mass because we're given grams. However, if you're given a number of moles, remember you multiply. So if you're given some number of moles and asked to calculate the number of grams of that substance, you're going to multiply by molar mass. So molecules, you're dealing with 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Mass, you're dealing with molar mass or atomic mass from the periodic table. So let's try this. I want to know how many grams of iron are in 2.7 moles of iron. Well, I have moles, right? Find the number in the unit. So I have moles and I want to find grams. When I have moles, I multiply. And because I want grams, I need to go to the periodic table. If I go to the periodic table, I'll see that that is the atomic mass of iron, right? Iron symbol is Fe. 
So I'm going to take 2.7 moles of iron and I'm going to multiply by 55.85. So if we do that, we get that we have 150 grams of iron. Cool. How about if I want to know how many moles of zinc there are in 15 grams? Well, now my number is attached to grams. So I have grams and I want to find moles. So if I have grams, I need the periodic table and I need to find zinc right there, 65.37. And I'm given grams, some number of grams. That means I need to divide by 65.37. So if we do that, we get 0.2. 2.3 grams of zinc. So when I have moles, I multiply by molar mass to get grams. And when I have grams, I divide by molar mass or atomic mass to get oh, moles. Whoops. Moles. Bad. Bad, Mrs. Campbell. How many of you caught that? All right, let's try some more. What if I want to know how many grams there are in 23 moles of carbon dioxide? Well, I have 23 moles, so I know I'm going to multiply. I'm finding grams, so I'm going to multiply by molar mass, which means I need to calculate the molar mass of carbon dioxide. Well, here's a little clip from the periodic table. If I make my little table, so AMU times number of atoms. So we have our carbon. If we go to the periodic table, carbon is 12.001, so I'm just going to write 12. I'm going to round that up. There's only one atom of carbon in carbon dioxide, so it's going to contribute 12 grams per mole. And then we have oxygen, and oxygen on the periodic table is 16 times 2. That's equal to 32. So we add these together, and we get 44 grams per mole. For carbon dioxide. All right, now I have my molar mass, so now I just have to multiply my number of moles, 23 moles of carbon dioxide, by 44 grams per mole. And if I do that, then I am going to get 1,012 grams of carbon dioxide. What if I want to know how many moles there are in 562 grams of carbon dioxide? Well, now I'm going to do the reverse, right? This time I'm given grams and I want to find moles. So we're going to write down 562 grams. And when I have grams and I want to calculate moles, I divide by molar mass, which we just calculated as 44 grams per mole. So 562 divided by 44 should be 12.77 moles. CO2. So when you have moles, you multiply. When you have the other unit, you divide. If it's molecule, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. If it's mass, it's molar mass or atomic mass from the periodic table. Let's do a little more complicated one. How do we calculate the molar mass of ammonium carbonate? Look at that, ammonium carbonate, ammonium is NH4, but this two here means that I have two ammonium carbonates. And then I just have one carbon carbonate, CO3. Well, anytime you have parentheses and you have a number outside the parentheses, like I have here, you need to distribute this two. So you need to multiply the two inside that parentheses. So if I don't have a number here, that's like one. So one times two means that I have two nitrogens. Four times two, right, that's eight. That means I have eight hydrogens. So anytime you have a parenthesis and a number outside, you need to distribute that number inside that parenthesis. So now when I calculate it, right, we're gonna make that table, the AMU times atom table. And I have nitrogen. If I go to the periodic table, there's my um, atomic mass or AMU of nitrogen, which I'm just gonna round to 14. There are two, right? So that's a total of 28 grams per mole. Hydrogen, we go to the periodic table, right? And that's one or 1.01 .01, and we multiply by eight. And so there's eight. So hydrogen contributes eight of those grams per mole. 
Um, now I go outside the parentheses here to the carbonate. There's carbon, and that's only one carbon. Carbon here is 12, so 12, and you can do 0 .001. Um, and there's only one, so that's 12. And then my last one, oxygen. Here's oxygen on the periodic table. It's 16 times 3, and that's 48. So ammonium carbonate, lots of stuff going on there. Um, when we add all of this together, if we go through and we add 28 to 8 to 12 to 48, we're going to get 96 grams of ammonium carbonate per mole. All right, so now we can do our very last problem, which is what is the number of grams in 3.5 moles of ammonium carbonate? Well, find the number in the unit. So I have moles, and what do we do when we have moles? We multiply. I want to find grams, so we multiply by molar mass. So 3.5 moles of ammonium carbonate times that molar mass, which was 96 grams per mole. What do you get? A lot of, a lot of grams, 336 grams of ammonium carbonate. All right. Our next video, we're going to talk about moles and liters, and then how do we put them all together? So, see you later.